Think that the Lord came to peace on this earth. He came to give us a sword. Shalom in the name of the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Time of Night, Watchman. Time of Night, Watchman. Time. Commentary, information, Bible prophecy stuff. I will help you're having a good time, a good day, a peaceful time with the Lord in the time of this time of Jacob's trouble, great tribulation, if you will. I sure know many of you are going through the wine press. Do not despair because there's always light at the end of the tunnel. I always hated that phrase, but hey, I'm going to throw that out there anyway. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> but let's go on. Just a heads up, September 6th to the 8th, 2021, relatively. Uh, this is according to Leviticus 23:24. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation, commonly referred to in the Jewish calendar, Rosh Hashanah, or the day of blowing of trumpets, which is another way of calling it. Uh, that's coming up. It will be on the new moon, as every time that is Rosh Hashanah and any other new moon, as well as a Sabbath. Understand we do follow a certain type of calendar here. We'll go into that briefly when I get into the prophetic countdown. Uh, but in the meantime, just keep that in mind. Put it on your calendar as a date. Again, this is a Sabbath time. It's time to rest, time to chill, time to do something holy, if you will. I remember a lot of people have, um, come to me about the Sabbaths. In general, what should I do on the Sabbath? You know, tr Traditionally, there are things you can do on the Sabbath. Mostly stay home, read your Bible, have a midrash or a fellowship. Uh, study amongst yourselves, uh, worship amongst yourselves, do whatever to do. But ultimately, as the Lord put it to me in this fashion, do good things. That's probably the best way to describe what to do on a Sabbath day. So I'm going to throw that out to you. And just remember, this date's coming up, September 6th, 2021, Rosh Hashanah, day of blowing of trumpets. And what's so significant about that? Well, think about it. A trumpet is announcing or warning or preparing for coming to Lord, of course, or his judgments, or his seasons. And this is a good time for prayer and meditation. Again, this is like a date, you know? Go out with, on a date. You ever been late for a date? How's that go for the date? Have you ever ignored a date? It never, never turns out really well. So keep this date in mind. It's important. Put some time aside for the Lord because this is between you and him. Again, this, we're not talking religion here. We are talking relationship. Let's move on. All right, this current scuttlebutt out there pertaining to this is the words people are saying in the diaspora, we'll call it the diaspora, uh, in regards to our country, it's going through a constitutional crisis. You know, I, I just love all these, these catchphrases and all these verbiage they throw out there, but we really never think about or never actually told about or taught about such thing, what is a constitutional crisis. So I'm going to tell you what it isn't versus what it is, and it's not a constitutional crisis. Hmm. Yeah, see, you know, it's going going after the root and get it cutting off the head of this. Yeah, it's not a constitutional crisis. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what it really is. And it, it, it may just blow your mind. You might get educated. And uh, hopefully your head is in that place when we get there. But in the meantime, we are going to talk the Prophecy Countdown. Right now, we've just been, I, I, you know, as the night watch, and that's one of my jobs, to adhere to God's laws and commandments and know his times. And the seasons of certain events and certain things. And I watched it today. And the Lord occasionally gives me a heads up of what's coming. And I share that very thing and very development that, that happens. And so far, it's always happened. So it's basically out of his mouth into your ears. And hopefully, God willing, there's some discernment on your part. And maybe you can have some fellowship. And maybe sometimes sometimes I have a dream. or And I'm not sure exactly what the dream means. There are people I go to says, what do you think it means? And we kind of discern it from there. And that's why I don't need a following, folks. I just need fellowship. Hmm? You with me? Cool. All right, let's move forward. All right, so when talking about prophecy or prophecy countdown, we're talking about, understand, I observe all of God's laws and commandments. Now, his biblical calendar, or God's calendar, is a loony solar calendar. You'll find most of the traditional uh, modern-day Jewishness, they still follow Friday night sundown to Saturday night sundown. Some people just do Saturday as the Sabbath, yada, yada, yada. But it makes no sense because, again, <clears throat> the Lord put the signs in the heavens for us. And Moses did not have a Timex. So uh, that whole mindset needs to change because you find as you move into this mindset of God's calendar, you'll see that all of, all of creation, I mean literally all of creation, is as in sync with his calendar. Whether it be agriculture, 
Would it be farming or well, it's agriculture? Uh, would it be ranching? Would it be fishing even? I mean, all these things are aligned in God's creation to his calendar. And it, it's, it's an amazing thing to observe when you're mixed into it. And you literally are tuned in to his calendar. Uh, even as of late, we're studying things about frequencies and, and tones and, and how there is this subtle frequency and tones within the confines of creation where all of God's creation worship and praise out to him where there's a groaning of creation calling out to him it, it's it's an interesting thing and something i've been studying especially coming out of the ancient hebrew aspect of it and learning for every letter to every word in the ancient hebrew is music hmm just like if you go to this beach and we're right by the beach lately i've been noticing the tone or the rhythm of the waves there, there's a tone there's a rhythm it's 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 interesting and it, it kind of coincides with something i learned about the the key of E, and uh, it just, uh, it's its a wonderful thing when you're following yourself in line, in the spirit, and in part of God's creation, and how everything falls in sync with him and his word. And it's very quite edifying just to be part of that. And hopefully you are get to that point as well, too. If not, hopefully you're already there. But let's continue. We're going to go, God, which is God's calendar, God's little solar calendar, what we know up to date and current events, and things that have been passing by. Now, understand, certain events, interesting enough, coincidentally enough, I use that term very loosely, because there are no coincidences here, uh, at every feast and every Sabbath, there always is some sort of event in the world that kicks off on those days. And it's a sign for us to be realized that this is God who's in control, and he has a plan for all of us, and there is no reason to fear but God himself. So, let's go into this. All right, September 23rd, 2017, we see the sign in the heavens, which happens to be on Rosh Hashanah, a day of blowing trumpets. We know this signifies, so this is how I understand it, is the beginning of Jacob's trouble. Now, of course, for years, the people have been deceived to believe that Jacob's trouble was only seven years, which is wrong, because if you actually study the Genesis, in Genesis, Jacob's trouble was time when he got the blessing of becoming the next heir. We know it's not just seven years, it's tw almost 21 years. But we know in the first seven years of Jacob's trouble, there's lots of deception. Whether deceiving his dad, if he literally was deceived, deceiving his brother, clearly was deceived, as well as the deception even from Laban, his uncle. So there's a lot of deception within the confines of seven years, but there's also blessings as well too. And you'll find, hopefully within the last four years, which we're coming up to, in this first seven, that you've been blessed even in the midst of all this trial and tribulation we've all been going through. So let's continue. All right, September 23rd, 2017 begins with a sign in the heaven, beginning a time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, interesting enough, coincidence, hmm? October 28th, 2017, the QAnon phenomenon begins. Not even a month later, this thing kicks off. To which Donald Trump and his cabinet of friends and military personnel and advisors says a storm is coming. Huh. Coincidence? I don't think so. Anyway, let's move on. So there are many false flags we see. Again, a lot of things fall in line. If you go back in history and look at these dates and times, like I said they fall in line with the loony solar calendar with the Trump impeachment, and we learn, of course, finally comes public and a realization there's something called the deep state, which I know from back in the day we call the satanic order. So nothing new for me, but something apparent for all of us, that those who are asleep are now coming to be awakened, hopefully, because, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. So be advised, here we are. This is the time of Jacob's trouble, look at all these events going on. And, of course, it's not going to be turning out how a lot of people have been taught because, well, they've been taught by these theologians and false prophets, false teachers to be warned about. And, uh, and you're right. I could be one of those. And I'm hoping that you will do discernment and prayer and seek God's counsel on that thing. And I'm always subject to correction, reproof, rebuke, as well as exhortation. It doesn't hurt my feelings. I'm not into the feeling thing. It's just, you feel okay today? I, I'm good, really. <laughs> I'm really good. I think one of the requirements of being a born again Christian, especially one who comes from Judaism, uh, having thick skin. So uh, I hope your th skin is thick and not super sensitive. I know people are hurting, but you know, get over it. Okay, let's move forward. <clears throat> Enter the maelstrom. Remember, I told you about this so over a year ago. 
It was only two years. That's two years now. 2019, the riots began. We entered the maelstrom. The whole purpose of the maelstrom was to pull down all the false prophets, the false teachers, all these false churches, all these false religions. And the basic societies we knew basically were just breaking down all around us. And we see the evil in us and around us manifesting clearly and apparently. And the subject matter is quite obvious with what the maelstrom does. It pulls ships down. Now, interesting enough, ships notoriety or symbology is basically a ministry or a church and many ships fell in this time period because well you know god has his appointed times and this is the time of the maelstrom so you'll see where christians stand where christians don't you know a lot of people you know what they call like the rhinos republican name only what we call sinos i guess christian in name only yeah, there's a lot of those out there. So, and we'll get into that as well, too, further into the constitutional crisis thing. So, anyway, but the point of that is we entered the maelstrom, all the riots began, all this havoc, chaos, uh, churches are being pulled under economically, politically, socially, financially, the works. I mean, it just, even sickness and disease, as a matter of fact. That's why for the last umpteen years, the Lord has been calling his people out of the her, my people, which we find if you, I'm sure if you are spirit filled and you're aware that today's churchianity, fluffy enemy we call it here, is basically the the apostate church. People have fallen away. They turn against the word of God. They become the sons and daughters of perdition, which is adding and taking away of God's laws and commandments. So we read that also in the book of Daniel. But the point of the matter is we enter the maelstrom, all this chaos and madness going on, people being pulled under. And, well, you know, your faith isn't strong. If not walk in the narrow path, it's, it's apparent what's going to happen to you. You'll be pulled down and under, including the church burnings. So in 2020, the Spirit of the Lord comes to me. It was February 13th of that year. He says, rebuke the Sandman. This is the first rebuke, mind you. Of course, you know, not but not even a week or two later, the word goes out about COVID-19. This man comes on, in on the scene because, you know, he is the know-it-all of when it comes to virus and bio, bio warfare, which is kind of funny because that's not funny, but that's what I did in the military. I was part of my education in the bioweaponry. Bioweapons, chemical weapons, nuclear weapons, conventional weapons. So the moment this guy opened his mouth up, I knew right away he was lying. And it's ironic because of the timing. The Lord told me not even a week later, or before I should say, to rebuke the Sandman. And basically the objective of Sandman is those who are asleep, whether they be Christian or no, their souls will be taken. And I'm going to prove that point when we get to that here briefly. All right, June 2021, the Feast of Weeks comes, or Pentecost to some of you. We get the word of the Lord, both in two different dreams. And the one is the harvest is ready, and it's after midnight. Yeah, it's after midnight, folks. We're going to get into this more. But, yeah, just a heads up on that, June 21st this year, uh, it's known as the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost. Another name for it is Shavuot. And uh, this is the word I get from the Lord, both in dream and word. And it's after midnight. So what does that mean? We're going to get into that briefly. Okay. So what's next? We look in the, math, the mathematical, the uh, prophetic calendar. Uh, the way I see it or understand it prophetically means it's, is it the reaping of the harvest? I, I think it is. This is the time. If the harvest is ready, it's time to be reaping. So we look at that in Matthew 13, 38, 39, 40, 41. It says, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. Hmm, exciting that part. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire. Uh-oh. So shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his, out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. Woo! And I've said this before. We, we've been traveling for three and a half months now, cities, towns, and, and I'll tell you straight up, people have not repented. There is no repentance in the land. Everybody knows there's something going on. People know there's something not right. People are latching onto QAnon and holding on to Trump as, his, as if he's some, some messiah. I'm sorry, folks, he's not. But the significant point of the matter is people's heart are just not, they're just not right. They're just not right with God. This is this is a time people should have been repenting. And now we're looking at 
the time of the reaping of the harvest. It's coming. If not, it's already here. Because I don't see it on a personal level doesn't mean it's not happening. So keep your eyes out. Keep your ears peeled and uh, see what's going to happen. Maybe you know something I don't know. I've heard of many things going on in the St. Louis area, down in the Mississippi and other places in the country. I haven't been there yet. I don't know. But word is there are people who are being harvested, if you will, for the kingdom of God. As for the other people, well, we'll get into them here shortly. So another dream, of course, was that of a drowning, I look like a drowning sheep, but the thing is God is going to pour out his righteousness, and it's going to be overwhelming. That's the best way I can point it. God's righteousness is quite overwhelming, especially if you're not used to that level of supernatural occurrence. Uh, God's wrath on unrighteousness. We read this in, the, in Proverbs 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Hmm. Boy, a lot of that going on today. So th we're, I imagine we're going to see something coming in from heaven that uh, will be part of God's wrath. And uh, it's not here against the righteous. It's here against the wicked. So as God poured out his righteousness, we're going to see his wrath poured out against the wicked. Keep that in mind. So you probably went, well, where are I going to be? Well, you know, again, look what God has done throughout the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation to the people within the confines of his word. He's always protected us. So are you an exception to his rule? Or are you part of the wicked? Now, don't lose your, your peace over this just because I give you the bad news, but it's only bad to those who are doing wicked. You know, there is no, the scripture says, there is no condem condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if I come up with a condemning word and you're actually feeling that condemning word, guess what? It's not me who's not walking in Christ Jesus. It's you. So keep that in mind. So it's, and I'm not giving it as a condemning word. This is just the way it is. The truth. And the truth is what makes us free. Then, of course, comes the second rebuke pertaining to the Sandman. I guess it's no wonder that all these people are wearing masks. I mean, let's face it. The whole purpose of the Sandman is those people who are asleep, He's to take their souls. And this is basically the byproduct of what the Sandman does. Even the whole manifestation of the so-called so COVID-19, the scare of a bioweapon, and from my own, personal, my own personal experiences with dealing with bioweapons, this, it's clearly a dud. In the military, we just simply call this a PSYOP. But the bottom line is, is that the whole fear mechanism, even find amongst most Christians today, is that they, they have fear. Why? Is God a liar? Look at it that way. The scripture says, For the Lord does not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. If there's anyone to fear, it, it's God, especially at this point in time. If you're one of those people who are wearing a mask, a lot of times you can't even argue, debate, discuss, even rationalize the, the illogic of, of wearing a mask, especially when you know basic science when it comes to the areas of bioweaponry or bio biology. And it's a damn shame. I think that's the hardest part of all. It's like watching an old friend dying right before your very eyes. And though it, it is easily to be resolved, instead they go in for the whole death process in itself. And this is what it is. And that's what the mask does. It, in a sense, basically smothers your soul. Kind of reminds me of that one scene in, uh, in The Matrix when uh, they were, let's see, they, see, they were interviewing Mr. Anderson, if you will. And, uh, and as they're trying to talk and prove his rights, as he was saying, Keanu Reeves act character, it, it gets his mouth is covered, and there is no mouth, essentially. And this is basically the gist of that. And it's a sad thing to watch, and that's basically what's going on today. So that's the rebuke the Sandman. So this is the spirit behind it. This is the objective. It's simply to take your soul. And as you see, many people, even to this day, months and over a year, after the fact, you can tell these people are lying. They still refuse to use common sense and objectivity to basically rebuke the Sandman. Instead, they follow after him because they still are asleep. Then, of course, we the people. This is, this is the thing, I guess, that kind of brought my thoughts up today with the constitutional crisis. We always seem to over-dramatize the situation, not really calling it for what it really is. There is really no constitutional crisis. The crisis is the the absence of our morality within the confines of our nation. <clears throat> if these want to compare us to Sodom and Gomorrah, we are definitely in that department. And look at our founding fathers. For example, Patrick Henry. 
He says, it cannot be emphasized so strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians, not on religions, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just getting the mindset with that Puritan background, <clears throat> look at John Adams himself. Our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government any other. To, to incite all these things that are opposition to God and his word, which this nation was founded on, those very principles, why do we even fight? I mean, the whole point of, the, of bringing ourselves separate from the tyranny of the Revolutionary War that we had to subject, be subjected by these kings, which brings us back to 1 Samuel chapter 8, by submitting ourselves to these kings, all they do is bring forth tyranny, laws that are not, it's draconic in and of itself. It's such, I love Thomas Jefferson's quote, he says, rebellion to tyranny is obedience to God. This is the moral imperative. This is what moves us. Yes, the Constitution is a document, a law document. It's not a living document. It's a document of law. Basic principles subjected to us by the authority of the Almighty God himself, our creator. We are not to be subjected by tyrannical mindsets like these Dr. Fauci's and whoever else who wants to make the dictates of such things. We're here to serve the only one God. Not unlike those of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, and Daniel. <clears throat> they refused to kneel before an altar of the king. And you know, look what you have today with all these people, their masks. They just follow anyone and everyone in their ideology and idolatry. Look at it as even Christians. It's, it's a sad testimony in churchianity and fluffianity. We totally ignore the, 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 this major point of going against tyrannical mindsets and the worldly principalities and powers and the people behind, behind the, the curtain, if you will. For example, we have abortion clinics. 1970 brought about the whole Roe vs. Wade legalizing and legitimizing abor aborting children within the in confines of a mother's womb. And of course, there were those tr Christians who stood up and fought against such forces, though it went against the populace, if you will. They stood up for righteousness, for righteousness' sake. They mer and, and, and it's justice or injustice of this country, with its laws, we murder a man who kills a man who murders children. Does that even make sense in any form of legal or lawful system? Is this just? When the principalities and morality of our country clearly has diminished going far back, well, it's not the first time in history this has happened. Even further back, John Brown. <clears throat> Virginia versus John Brown was a criminal trial held in Charlestown, Virginia, October of 1859. He was an abolitionist. Imagine that. He was an abolitionist, a Christian, a reverend, a preacher. In Virginia, October 1859, so was quickly prosecuted for treason against the Commonwealth of Virginia. Imagine that. Murder and inciting a slave insurrection, all part of his raid on the United States Federal Arsenal at Harpers Ferry, Virginia. It's interesting. Even the letters between Thomas Jefferson and John Adams addresses the, the moral imperative that civil war must be broken out in order to deal with the sin, and those are his words, of slavery. Anyway, John Brown was, was found guilty of all charges, sentenced to death, and he was executed by hanging on December 2nd. Imagine that. An abolitionist against slavery. And what do we have today? See, society does not dictate what is moral. God dictates what is moral and what is righteous. Not our society, not our lawyers or legal systems. It's God. He sets the standard. He sets the morality, not man. So what is this justice we have in this land? We talk about rights, but what is right? To murder the unborn, the satanic rituals, false gods, idolatry, adultery, pornography, covetousness, stealing. Is this right or you're right? No, it's a wrong. It's interesting enough in 1 Timothy 4, 2, it says, Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And that's what we even see within the confines of today's churchianity. We refuse to distinguish the distance between right and from wrong and good from evil. We've become the very problem that exists today in the hypocrisy. And because we have been purposely, if you will, spiritually made brain dead 
and morally unconscious that we look the other way and not get ourselves involved in the very thing we should be involved with. It's, it's something interesting. In the book of Revelation, it talks about the one church layout to see how their hearts are lukewarm. They're neither hot nor cold. These are subject matters of morality, not about law. We already know the law. It's God's law. Moving on. And then there's the vigilante justice. Oh, you know, these guys were vigilante. They killed this abortion doctor. They killed this, this person and that person. Yet, isn't it interesting what vigilante justice, or is it just justice? Psalm 58, 10 in the King James says, The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Is it vigilante, or is it justice? I mean, I applaud the heroes to do such things, whether it be like Batman or Punisher in the comic book world, but even in reality, it's the same to my book. Even those men and women else out there fighting against the satanic order, in the end, saving children from being sacrificed. Was it under the guise of the Attorney General, the federal government, or the President of the United States? No. It was because of God and his morality, his principles, his laws, his commandments. There was even a fellow who we talked about this some months back. Was the machine gun pr preacher who was up there in the Sudan killing all these bad guys who were trying to murder children, making these orphanages. And where's that kind of fervor, that kind of righteousness here in the United States of America? Lukewarm, perhaps. We'll see. As God pours out his righteousness, much is going to change. Then, of course, we hold right back to the Constitution itself, a legal document, not a living document, a legal document. When it says we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are endowed by their creator, hmm, with certain unalienable rights, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, that whenever any form of, the, of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government. Destructive. Murdering on board, saying it's okay. Pornography, saying it's okay. Tell me when this stuff became right. <clears throat> too many times I hear, well, you know, deep state's too did big, government's too big, people too much, too much this, too much, too big. <clears throat> Does it really matter how big they are? If you take the, the analogy of David versus Goliath, how they're how big are they compared to the Almighty? It doesn't really matter how many they are. Look at the hundreds and thousands we read about in the book of Psalms. A thousand in my left hand, ten thousand on my right. Jericho, Gideon, Samson, the list goes on. We know, we know the stories. We've read them. Well, hopefully you have. And in the end, regardless of what the situation is, God is going to get the glory. When I hear the word patriots are in control, they're not in control. No more than a deep state in control. God is in control. In the arrogance, we think ourselves highly even above God himself. We subject ourselves to the very curses, if you will, thinking ourselves above God. But God is in control. God is the main power and source. And that's exactly what David looked at. He didn't look at Goliath being the tall giant of a Nephilim. He looked at Goliath as something small compared to the Almighty. Which takes in that part renewing of the mind, especially the mind of a 16 year old who David was. Let me come to this closing end here. This comes from Thomas Paine, and this pretty much hits it on the nose for most of us. He says, These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of his country, but he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. The crisis is not a constitutional one. The crisis is the morality or immorality of a nation that's turned its back on a holy God and those few of us who stayed faithful and true to his name and his word. There is no other crisis. There's only the truth. And the truth is what makes us free. Well, folks, this is Time of Night Watchman. Time of Night Watch time. Commentary information, bio proxy stuff. See ya. Don't want to be ya. And remember... There's only one way, one truth, and one life. In Jesus' name, amen.